Fox News Alert, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte has announced that embattled FBI official Peter Strzok has been subpoenaed to testify publicly, and it will happen Tuesday, July 10th. This as an attorney for Strzok is now claiming House Republicans are twisting his private testimony and that testifying publicly will be a trap. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harrods live in Washington. So we have a date and a time now, Catherine. We do. They, uh, thank you, Harrison. Good afternoon. The lawyer for FBI agent Peter Strzok is accusing Republicans of twisting and leaking his client's testimony. Strzok testified last week to investigators and some lawmakers on the House Oversight and Judiciary Committee who are running a joint Russia inquiry. Strzok did not answer our questions or any news organizations during his 11 hours on the Hill with 90 minutes in a classified session. According to the correspondence confirmed by Fox, Strzok's lawyer said says he initially expressed an interest in testifying publicly, but it was the House committees that wanted a closed-door session as a first step. Quote, we know what's in store in the next hearing. They will ask special agents struck many of the same questions and then seize on any tiny inconsistencies to prove that he perjured himself or made false statements. Given that the committee has proven it is playing political games, violating both our trust and its own rules, it is no longer makes sense for us to keep playing along. Last week, the FBI Director Christopher Wray and the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein got some pretty rough questioning about Strzok, his text messages, and whether political bias infected the Clinton email and Russia investigations. Just think of the timeline here. You have Peter Strzok. He opens up the counterintelligence investigation against Trump's campaign the end of July. Then a week later, this text message, he ain't going to be president. We'll stop it. Then the next week, the infamous insurance policy text message where he says, we can't take the risk of a Trump presidency. You need an insurance policy. The American people see that. Doesn't that undermine the whole integrity of the actions of people like Peter Strzok? Yes, Congressman. That uh, obviously is highly inappropriate. As you mentioned here, as in the last hour, the House Judiciary Committee released this statement confirming that they have issued a subpoena for agents struck to appear publicly on Tuesday next week. We'll see whether we get a response from his lawyer this afternoon, whether they will comply with that request. Harris. Catherine, thank you very much. Joining us tonight, Congressman Matt Gates. He serves on a number of key committees, including Judiciary, Budget, Armed Services. Uh, Congressman, great to have you with us. Let me first get your reaction. A lot going on today, as you well know. You've been involved in uh, much of it. Uh, Justice Kennedy's retirement, how, how do you feel about it? And do you have a favorite among those 25 uh, on that, uh, that special presidential list? Well, I think there are a number of excellent choices that the president can make. And you'll remember, Lou, that a number of conservatives voted for Donald Trump because they knew that the future of the Supreme Court could be uh, at play, could be the very deciding thing that dictates what this presidency will ultimately judge by, be judged by with the American people. And so I'm excited that he's got that opportunity. And uh, look, when you look at just the decision we got today on unions, where uh, public sector union members won't be forced to pay off union bosses just to have jobs, uh, it certainly shows you how impactful the membership and the composition of the Supreme Court can be. Uh, absolutely. And those conservatives who voted for President Trump uh, have to be feeling uh, very good because they got an additional bonus. The most successful president in uh, uh, 16 months as president uh, since FDR uh, and uh, another Supreme Court uh, justice choice uh, to boot. Uh, let's turn, if we may, to this uh, peculiar, uh, even by Paul Ryan standards, this peculiar vote that took place today in the House as he pushed forward a so-called compromise bill on amnesty and open borders, because everything that Ryan does has to be associated with amnesty and open borders. Uh, and the, vo the vote was overwhelming. Uh, it was a stunning defeat for the legislation, uh, for the speaker, uh, and for K Street, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Business Roundtable, the Koch brothers, and Wall Street. Well, I will tell you that there are two principal questions that define that, the, that divide the Republican Party on immigration, Lou. The first is the path to citizenship. Uh, I'm an immigration hardliner, I'll admit it, and I don't think that people who come here illegally should have a path to citizenship. That is not what the rule of law demands of us. Uh, even if they have sympathetic stories and even, even if we create some sort of legal mm -hmm. status for people to work, citizenship is not something we bestow on people who come here illegally. Second thing, chain migration. Immigration 
hardliners do not want to see people coming to this country or being uh, legalized as a consequence of their family relationships rather than the economic value that they can bring to the country. The America first agenda that the president is delivering on for the American people demands that we put the interests of this country first, not the interests yeah. of family reunification over our economic uh, objective. And so I think that the president's right. Here's the question. Moving forward, will we start by negotiating from the Ryan bill or will we start from negotiating from the bill that got 193 votes? I think we ought to start with the conservative bill and as the basis to go forward. You're not you're not contemplating another vote on on illegal immigration, amnesty and open borders in uh, before the midterms, are you? I'm, Lou, we because promised I, I, people I, I, a wall. We promised people a wall. We promised people yeah. we're going to get rid of the visa lottery. They're going to end chain migration. Talking about, everybody starts talking about open borders. They talk about amnesty. Uh, this, is, this should be clear to everyone now. Let, let's go to not just the Republicans uh, in the House of Representatives, uh, because there's some awful, difficult uh, <laughs> issues facing some of those people, not the least of which is their reelection. The American people are expecting this president to build a wall. That's mm -hmm. a promise. Many of uh, your colleagues promised mm -hmm. to join him in that effort to build a wall. So I'm just curious how this thing gets twisted around every time. How is it that we have seen what happened since 1986 every time you listen to a Democrat promise you border security right after you vote for amnesty? This time, why doesn't every Republican pledge this? There will be no amnesty whatsoever for any illegal immigrant until the border wall is built. Not funded, not appropriated, but built. And our border is secure. Well, I would go a step further. It's not just the wall that's going to secure our borders. It's going to be E-Verify. It's going to be ending the visa lottery, entering chain migration, stopping sanctuary cities where people I, can come and break I'm, the law I'm and hurt people. I'm perfectly thrilled with that. I, I want to do it all. I, I, I want to I do every bit that. of it. But you know what? The last time I heard people say they wanted to do it all, I witnessed about a 20-year fight over something called, mm. quote, comprehensive immigration reform. Now, you now, as a practiced and veteran legislator, understand that one of the greatest uh, it's, and simplest ploys in Washington, D.C., is if you can't solve a problem, you make it bigger. And then you can talk comprehensive, and then you don't do anything. This time, build a wall, secure the border, and then we'll talk about how we're going to change immigration law. The American people deserve that consideration, that respect from this president and this Congress and the next one elected. Don't you agree? Well, I do. I think we need about 30 more votes. I mean, we had 193 votes him. for a bill that do to do just that. 30 well, votes. You republic. I mean, you watch this president. He works <laughs> night and day. All of yeah, you, no, he did you, a great job work like the Dickens, Look, too. But I got to say yeah. to you, I, you need a speaker who will work and work for the American people, not for the Chamber of Commerce, who will work. For, for the deplorables and not for the business roundtable in Wall Street. Uh, do you think that can be done? Because that's what you guys should be focusing on. Every <laughs> rhino in Congress ought to be defeated, and every one of them should be defeated by a conservative Republican. Hey, from your lips to God's ears, Lou, I would love to have more conservatives here in the Congress. We have the Congress that we have right now. And look, I think this will be an issue in the elections because, like you said, right. we haven't delivered on a promise. The immigration was the central issue in this last election. Yeah. And my expectation is that the American people are going to be demanding a lot more of us in the midterms than we've offered them. And another issue that it just keeps uh, bubbling up, and we think it's near resolution, uh, if not conclusion, uh, and that is, of course, the, the conspiracy in the deep state and amongst mm -hmm. the Dems and the left in this country uh, who are insinuated into every part of our federal government. And today you had one of the most brazen among them, Peter Strzok, uh, once the head of counterintelligence at the FBI, uh, who was uh, absolutely singular in the uh, the mid-year exam, the email uh, scandal investigation by the FBI of Hillary Clinton, uh, the, Bob Mueller's uh, special mm -hmm. counsel. Oh, yes. And the you remember the collusion by the Trump uh, campaign? I, I mean, this guy was central. And today, behind closed doors, you got to hear him. We should have had that as an open hearing, Lou, and I expect we'll have him in front of everyone very soon. But I was m most taken 
by the lack of curiosity of Bob Mueller when he had to reassign Peter Strzok back to the FBI. I mean, you would think when Bob Mueller found all these text messages where, where Peter Strzok was talking about his bias against the president, that Mueller would inquire into those things, that he would ask whether or not investigative decisions were impacted by the clear bias of his top investigator, Peter Strzok. And I am just flabbergasted that Robert Mueller didn't seem to ask the basic questions that someone would ask if they found out that their chief investigator was spewing hate and bias about the very person that they were supposed to be investigating and the Trump campaign. And so I think there are a lot more questions for Bob Mueller after Peter Strzok's interview. And my hope is that we can get this information out before the American people with public hearings and public testimony very soon. And uh, Strzok, uh, did he say anything of, uh, of relevance, of uh, meaning, substance today? Or was it more of the same, isn't he a cute little fella and uh, he can do what he wants to with the federal government uh, at his disposal to frame the president of the United States when he wishes or exonerate a candidate, a Democratic candidate for president whenever he wishes? Uh, it was very clear to me that Peter Strzok had deemed Hillary Clinton not guilty before even interviewing her or conducting major portions of the investigation. And he deemed Donald Trump guilty and ready for impeachment after only a day or two of opening up that investigation. The bias not only existed in the hearts of these people, it existed in the investigative decisions that they were making to make nothing of the Hillary Clinton email investigation and instead to prioritize this total hoax, this total witch hunt into Donald Trump. It is disgusting, and we need to put it on display so that it never happens in this country again. You and I always have a candid and straightforward uh, conversation. This Thursday, you're going to hear from Christopher Wray, uh, mm -hmm. from Rod Rosenstein, uh, the Deputy Attorney General uh, uh, at the House uh, Judiciary Committee. Uh, they have defied oversight from the Congress throughout. They have mm -hmm. slow rolled the administration and you guys. How long mm -hmm. are you going to put up with their nonsense? I hope not too much longer because uh, information that we've requested before they opened up on George Papadopoulos would tell us whether or not the FBI was collecting intelligence on the Trump campaign. Uh, we need those documents. It may show payments. It may show records of sources that were being worked. And these are people who do not believe in congressional oversight. That's not my perception of their actions. It's what they've actually said. Rod Rosenstein said on May 1st that there is no constitutional basis for congressional oversight and so uh, we're going to press them a great deal and we're going to try to find out the truth and you know what if they don't produce the documents we need to begin impeachment and we need to have the support of our leadership to do that we need strong leadership on the power of congress to conduct oversight and we're always looking for more help from our leaders here well your leadership uh, you need help but you need help in the form of new leadership i don't know if we could agree on that but let's conclude with that statement uh, irrespective Thank you very much, Congressman. Always great to have you with us, Congressman Matt Gates. And good Thank luck you, Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about that attorney for embattled FBI official Peter Strzok. He sent anti-Trump messages, those text messages, remember? Well, now the attorney is accusing House Republicans of selectively leaking portions of his client's private testimony last week. The attorney made the allegation in a letter sent to the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, saying, quote, Having sharpened their knives behind closed doors, the committee would now like to drag back Special Agent Strzok and have him testify in a public, uh, at public request that we originally made and that the committee denied. What's being asked of the Special Agent Strzok is to participate in what anyone can recognize as a trap. Given that the committee is playing political games, violating our trust and its own rules, it no longer makes sense for us to keep playing along, end quote. Your thoughts? The fact that they are complaining about leaks going on, you wonder, have they been watching this investigation? <laughs> this committee's done nothing but leak and get out there. And it really goes back to, if you have nothing to be concerned about, you don't mind going and testifying before the committee. Mm -hmm. And what we're now starting to see is now you're going to start having Comey and Strzok and all these individuals at the FBI at the center of this brouhaha now all out trying to defend themselves and get ready and get your popcorn because it's going to start being dem on dem fighting. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hi, our Democrat I friend on the couch. Yeah, so two things. One, <laughs> if 
you've not got nothing to hide. Do you think the president is going to sit down with Bob Mueller? He, they are determining that. He has made very clear he's willing to do it. Well, but then he said that he, under the advice of his lawyers, he that's what everybody do says. It. That's what Michael Cohen said yesterday yeah, but too, it, on whether or not he speak about any payouts or anything like that. That's what everybody we says. We know that pleading the fifth doesn't mean that you're. That's guilty. not the same as no, I'm no, going to move ahead what, based on the counsel of my attorney. But Peter Strzok, originally, at least it was reported, did want to sit in his, front of a public his attorney committee just said it. and said it again. We obviously don't know what really goes on in these things. He will have to. I imagine, plead the fifth to a number of questions, and that will then make him look, if he does do a public hearing, will then make him look guilty for these things. We have seen the text messages. In terms of leaking, you're completely correct. People on both sides of the aisle on these committees have been leaking nonstop. So I'm sure there are selective messages that we've seen and selective output mm -hmm. from the meeting last week. Like, we heard very little about it, um, but it was certainly different what I heard on the Dem side from what the Republicans heard on their side there. So I would say it would be best for him to get out there and at least speak to the American people directly, like Rod Rosenstein and Christopher Wray did quite effectively last week. But if he, if he is going to have to say, I can't answer that question, the implicit understanding then is yeah, that the he's guilty of something. The difference between Rosenstein and Christopher Wray is that they are not, you know, they're, they're not in the crosshairs of this investigation. Well, I think and this they're not text messages saying that they want to try to keep but, but we talk all the, the time about whether President Completely Trump is going to fire Rod Rosenstein. And I think so he this is guy, this guy made a complete fool of the FBI. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should be ashamed of Peter Strzok and the way he handled this investigation. I can't figure him out because at first he said he wanted to sit down with them. Congress gave him a number of dates. Apparently he said he wasn't able, I don't know what he's busy doing that's more important than that. They almost had to subpoena him. Personally, I would love a public hearing because I think a lot of the American people want to hear him answer some of those very serious questions about why he handled things the way that he did in the early days of the yeah, let me pull let me pull my Walmart shop in <laughs> Southern Virginia butt up to the TV with a big barrel of popcorn and watch Christ? this guy testify in front of the American people. That's exactly what By every, the way, can everybody I sit wants next to, to you? Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> it's like mystery science theater with uh, Peter Strzok. The, but that's what everybody wants to see, and we can cut through all the posturing. And by the way, for him to come up, come out initially and say, I I'll appear in front of your committee, that right. was nothing but posturing. People also want to see consequences. How can you get away with that, and then nothing happens to you in the end? We'll we'll, we will see how this plays out. We'll stop it, he Perched said. with the right. popcorn. And then the insurance policy, oh. again, after the Russia probe was started. All right, well, on that note.